Hallelujah. Well, when he mentioned about our situations, you know, we're waiting for God to move on the situations. He just wants to move on us. He doesn't have any problem with dealing with inanimate objects. Amen. It's the old will of the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. That he has a hard time with because we won't let go. But when we let go, <laughs> everything else falls into place. Sister Joanne, come. You just came and told me before I came to church uh, something that happened. Do you just give a, a little word to the people? She's from Germany originally, lives in Florida, travels to the nation. Well, the Lord has been changing me and changing me and changing me like he has all of you. And I really appreciate what he did today. He was really digging deep in some area of uh, a relationship that I have with my granddaughter that is the purity of her love that I've never experienced with anyone else other than Jesus' love. And I, all afternoon, just he was just working in me to teach me his love, which is much beyond anything that men can give or children can even give. And I praise him for what he's doing in this place. And I thank you for the metamorphosis, for the changes that are coming to us. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. She came in with tears in her eyes. She said, God, touch me in a wonderful way today. Hallelujah. One of the ladies came up to me doing the offering, and she said that she had had a vision about a few nights ago or a week ago and had seen the Lord standing here with a hose watering the people. But he said this. He said if the people would come every night for the next two weeks, hallelujah, that everybody would move into the same type of anointing that Brother Benny Hinn walks in, hallelujah, that after two weeks of watering, Hallelujah, by the Lord. The Lord's doing the watering, amen. Hallelujah, he knows that little flower on the back row, the one that's way over in this place. He knows every little flower, every little blade. Oh, hallelujah, and he's doing it by his spirit. Sometimes we just need to be under the tabernacle and be saturated, oh, ha, <laughs> ha saturated with that glory. Sister Marilyn, come and just give a word of greeting to the people. Oh, sometimes we don't hear enough from everybody. Sister Marilyn's part of the ministry here, and she and her husband go to the nations. Hallelujah. While we were worshiping this evening, I had a beautiful vision, and I saw the angels of the Lord coming in the midst of the congregation, and they had trays, and on the trays were cups. And the cups were all different sizes. And the Lord said, this is my cup. Will you take and will you drink it? And I'll tell you, I, I saw some people, they just had little cups. But I saw as they took the cup and they began to drink it, the cup began to grow. And some of the people had cups that were very plain, beautiful gold, but they were plain. Whereas other people that had yielded to God and let God do that work deep within us, and let his glory be brought forth in us, his character and his nature be manifested within us. These cups began to have beautiful ornaments put on it, and these cups began to grow. And when I looked, I saw Sister Ruth, and before Sister Ruth, she had a cup that was about up to her waist. And it was beautiful gold. It was covered with rubies. There were pearls down the stem of this cup. It was a, more a chalice than a cup. And it was about that high. And I saw her reaching out to take it again. And when she touched it and brought it to her lips, I saw it begin to grow. And I saw the angels of the Lord with chisels and chiseling in our chalices, in that cup that the Lord would have us to drink. I tell you, it's the cup of eternity. It comes in his presence. It's the cup of his glory that he's offering unto us. And you know, I saw another vision and I saw the body of Christ and I saw them sitting in chairs. I saw them sitting in couches. I saw them in very comfortable positions. And I tell you, I saw in a moment's time, I saw angels again busy in our midst. And I saw him begin to remove the chairs begin to remove all those things that would be comfortable. And the Lord said the day of the spectators are over. The day of sitting and looking on while someone else does it, 
why someone else praises, while someone else worships, while someone else goes, while someone else gives is over. But that he's going to cause his people such a single-mindedness to come unto them that they're going to get up off their beds of ease, their beds of comfort, their seats where we've been comfortable for so long and they're going to be willing to yield to God and yield to everything that he has for us and drink that cup that he set before us. Amen. And I want to tell you something. So many people are afraid of the unknown in God. They're afraid of that unknown will. God, what will you require? But you know something? There's an abandonment that comes in his presence. When we say, Lord, no matter what it is that you require of me, Lord, no matter what you want, Lord, because of what you've done for me, because you're so beautiful, because I feel your love, and Lord, there's nothing else, there's nowhere else where the answer is, there's nowhere else where the joy is, there's nowhere else where the peace is, but in your presence, Lord, whatever, Lord, I'll drink the cup that you set before me, I'll get up off of my chair and my couch of ease, and Lord, I'll just yield to you and drink all that you have for me even in the unknown places God I'm going to trust you and trust the unknown will you know God gives us many times will give us a vision and we begin at point A but in between are all the roads that we have to get to and sometimes those roads are dark sometimes they're tunnels sometimes it seems like there's a pit right in the middle but I want to tell you in those ways while we're pursuing him. I tell you, he's working in that road, his character and his nature within us. And I tell you, God's doing a work in his people for those that have ears to hear, for those that are willing to yield to God and set their mind on the things above and not of the things of the earth. Because I tell you, they're going to be corrupted, they're dust, they're moth, they're empty but letting your mind be fixed on that which is eternal and saying, yes, Lord, and drinking the cup that he set before us. Amen? And that's what this camp meeting will do for all of you that have come. Some of you have been coming for years and you've stepped out on the water. Well, I want to tell you there's waters that you haven't stepped out on yet. And some of you are going to take that first step and get out of the boat, even at the end of this camp meeting. Let God stir you deep within. Don't waste a moment, but say, yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I know you're ready because that's why you're here. And the Lord has already said the big wave's coming. How many heard it? Amen. It's too late. It's coming your way. How many were here all day today? You've been in the services. Oh, I tell you, they've been wonderful services. Something happened. I don't know. I was here this morning, and I was here this afternoon, and you just missed it. All of it, you weren't here. You just missed it. Were you here, Debbie? I'm telling you, I got my ballerina shoes on, and I danced all across the platform. Sister Ruth, I got my car today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I felt the release in the spirit. There was such a joy and a victory. But there was a move of God. It's been all day long from this morning till even now. And I know you're ready for that move of God. When sister said that God had his big water hose out, I saw. <laughs> Ooh, he's going to water your garden. Hallelujah. Oh, your flowers are going to grow. <laughs> Oh, well, that's how he does it. He just comes with his wonderful presence. Oh, a move of his spirit. But I can... <laughs> oh, what a vision. <laughs> the look on his face was what was so wonderful. the joy you're getting the understanding yes it's joy it's the joy when he begins to bring that flow. <laughs> that 
that's the message. <laughs> this is the message. God wants to bring that joy unto our lives. Sister Merlin said, the fullness, and I just saw us moving, moving, moving. Stop laughing so I can talk. <laughs> moving, moving with God. Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful. Moving with God and just enjoy. a tidal wave, it's sure different, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right, he's taking your mask off, hallelujah. We're seeing the real you now, amen. <laughs> I'll just give you a quick vision, and then we're going to take an offering. <laughs> That's the first vision. <laughs> we're going to tell <laughs> Sister Michelle said, can I tell it? I won't tell who it was, but it's for everybody. Sister Michelle said she had a vision of the Lord just taking layers off of our faces. Who he just re He's removing. How many masks do you have on tonight? Hallelujah. He's just removing the mask. Now, listen, when you see it as God sees it, you understand the joy of it. But <laughs> <laughs> but everybody had a button, and God pushed it. It was the belly button, and when he pushed his finger into the belly button, everyone began to laugh. <laughs> God doing it? Yes, he is. He said he's doing it a new way. <laughs> when he can get you loose, he can loosen a lot of other people. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Whoa, he just watered your garden. How many felt it? <laughs> I want you to stand on your feet if you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a new service. tonight. Amen. <laughs> it all started when Marilyn Hickey came down the aisle one night and she was getting ready to minister to someone else and I was standing in the way so she hit me right in the middle and she said it's joy unspeakable sister. It took three days for it to come but it finally came. Amen. And it hasn't stopped since then. Give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Well, I'm standing here because I'm going to take an offering. Glory to God. Can you give the Lord a praise offering? Hallelujah. Don't anybody sit, stand up with me because we might have another wave of this laughter. Hallelujah. But Sister Ruth's going to minister tonight. Who knows? Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a praise offering. I, I tell you. I mean, the Lord just sends you in this direction and says, come back again. And we don't understand what the Lord is doing, but she left us just a 
few days ago, and here she is again. <laughs> and it's wonderful what God's doing, isn't it? What a surprise. And there were people that wanted to hear her, and I said, oh, she's gone. But here she is again, and we know the Lord has blessed her. <laughs> and anointed her. And I want you all to stand so I can take this offering. Stand, if you will. Everyone stand. Lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you love it when he just opens your heart? You can be free to love him, free to give tonight. Hallelujah. Sister Ruth has traveled to Germany, got all the way home, I believe. And the Lord told you to turn around and come back, back here. And uh, I, I just feel the glory. How many feel the glory? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I think we're all having to learn to adjust. Amen. We all think we're ready for the glory, but we're all, uh, you know, we're all waiting to do something when the glory comes. And of course, the glory is coming to keep us from doing something. Amen. That's the problem. The church has had too many programs. Too many activities, you know, when we didn't know what to do, we did a, another program. But we're going to find that uh, in the glory, we're going to cease from our own labors. <laughs> oh, how many know what I'm talking about? Uh, our own labors, we're going to cease from our own labors. Uh, and let that glory begin to minister, not only ministering unto us, but ministering unto those round about us. Hallelujah. And that glory that ministers is just going to come and rest upon us. Now, Brother Heflin earlier tonight was leading that song, You Are Awesome in This Place. In fact, a minute or two before he led it, I thought, oh, I'd like to sing. You are awesome in this place. And a moment or two later, he started singing it. But I had the feeling I could sing it all night. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we're going to find that God is going to do it differently. That maybe there are times we start singing, you are awesome in this place, and we never do another thing. Except stand and sing, or fall out. In fact, I saw it tonight in the spirit, uh, where I saw people rolling on this platform. Amen. I saw them rolling. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, it's almost as like with Sister Carneal, when she got up here, she kept trying to compose herself. Well, stop worrying about composing yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. If God begins to bring the laughter, I mean, it's what you've been fasting for. <laughs> oh, you said, well, I was fasting for the glory. Well, <laughs> we don't know how the glory is coming. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And when God begins to do it, you say, well, I didn't come all this way just to laugh. I'd watch it. God might get you on the side of the road on the way home. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He might get you on the side of the road just laughing. I told the folks that were here when I spoke earlier at the opening of camp meeting that I have lived in Jerusalem, you know, 20-some years, and for since around 1980, they have had in Jerusalem annually a conference called the Feast of Tabernacles, sponsored by the Christian Embassy. And you know, they always bring the speakers from overseas, and we local people get to attend. And uh, two or three times, you know, they uh, called on me to say a prayer in front of, you know, three or four thousand people, or they. Uh, had me stand up and introduce uh, some speaker or, or uh, once they gave me 10 minutes on the major night on the platform to say something. 
but I had waited 14 years. And then they invited me to come and to speak on the glory realm. That was last October. The night before the meeting, on the way across town, God gave me a song concerning the glory realm and a brand new song. And I got up the next day and I sang the song and I read a scripture and suddenly laughter began. Now they had never had laughter in these meetings before. Oh, I'm feeling the rain of the Spirit beginning to come down. Anybody feeling that rain? Oh, yes. <laughs> the man with the watering hose is here. <laughs> oh, yes. The man with the watering hose. I'm feeling those sprinkles. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Well, amen. I start, the folks began to laugh. And I began to laugh. And I tried to tell a little bit uh, of what God was doing. I had just been down in South Africa. And uh, when I got to South Africa, they had had a whole itinerary lined up. It was one of the few times, uh, I think the only time anybody ever lined up an itinerary for me in some foreign country and just invited me to come. And when I got to South Africa, I wasn't sure what God wanted to do. But one of the first nights, that laughter broke out. <laughs> Hallelujah. In our meeting in churches where it had never, they had never seen it before. I remember one night, uh, we were in a church of about 1,200. And there were this large number of sea of people who were down at the, at the altar. And as that sea of people was at the altar... Suddenly, I saw a wave of God oh, begin to come. And I quickly, the pastor was standing about here, and there were steps in front. Uh, and I quickly called the pastor because I wanted him to see the wave as it came in. And about 50 people over here fell out uh, without anybody praying for them. Now, these are people that don't normally fall out. Uh, and people that had never laughed before, and about 50 fell out over here, and about 50 there, and about 100 back in here. And, and it, the wave just, as he stepped on the platform, that wave began. You could see it. See it in the spirit. It just, the way it began to move as it went over the people, they just began to fall out under the power of God all over and back in the back and they began to laugh and this brother you know most of his people were Dutch reform people very sophisticated Afrikaans people you know very elite people one of the ladies <laughs> we had lunch with a couple of days later I couldn't see her because this was happening all the way back as big as this uh, tabernacle. This was hundreds of feet back and the crowds were there and I couldn't see. But I, I learned a day or two later when we were having lunch with this very sophisticated woman, she, <laughs> she began to tell us, she said, I was, I was pinned to the floor. And she said, finally, after some time, now here, she was about six feet tall, a little taller, very thin, very, very sophisticated, very rich lady with all the proper jewels and, you know, everything that goes with it. And she said, when I came to myself, I, I, I tried to find my legs. And she said, I didn't have any legs. And I tried to find my hands. And she said, I didn't have any hands. But she said, I, I wanted to move because, you know, now she comes back to herself and she's conscious that, you know, here she's this very important lady, one of the chief intercessors in the whole country of, Aust in, uh, of South Africa, head of all the intercessors. And she's crawling around on the floor. And she said, finally, I crawled over to a pole and began to pull myself up the pole. 
<laughs> oh, hallelujah. Well, that night God just, I mean, this pastor, I saw him later in Jerusalem. He said to me, Sister Ruth, from that meeting that night, he said the very next week we added another Sunday night service. Now, you know, churches that are growing, they are, many of them, adding Sunday morning services, but not Sunday night. I mean, you know, who goes to church on Sunday night anywhere in the world except camp meeting in Virginia? I mean, most people, if they go to church Sunday morning, most churches don't have. Oh, a few of us more spiritual, but you know, I'm saying in general, people don't have Sunday night services anymore. But they added, they had their regular Sunday night service at 6 o'clock. And then that's for the ones that have children that have got to be in school early the next morning and they've got to be, you know, so the children and the ones, 6 o'clock, 6, 7.30 was the second service. 6 o'clock was for those that still hadn't gotten in the wave. <laughs> 7.30 for those that were in the wave and wanted to stay in it. <laughs> He said instantly the next Sunday night when they added the extra service, his Sunday night crowd grew 400 people in one night because of that wave of glory that began to come over the people. Hallelujah. We saw this from one end of Australia, uh, uh, South Africa to the other. I didn't plan. I didn't know God was going to use us to go down and laugh. I mean, you know, and when you got a few sermons you'd like to preach and you... You know, you've learned all these things that you want to tell the people. I mean, they need to learn what you've learned. And then you just go down and laugh <laughs> and laugh <laughs> and laugh and don't do much more else and nobody will ever remember you because all they were doing was laughing. One service, <laughs> in fact, a couple of days ago in Jerusalem, I'm, I'm going to be in, Aus in uh, South Africa. I don't know why I keep saying Australia. I'm going to be in South Africa in a couple of weeks. So my friend came over that traveled with me last year, Amanda Vandervault, and uh, she brought me a list of the churches we were in. She's from South Africa. And she wrote a little note beside each of the churches so I'd be sure to remember which church? She says, now this was the church <laughs> where the lady was crawling on the floor. <laughs> this was the church where the piano player suddenly fell over on the piano. She is giving me all these little <laughs> remembrances so I'd remember which church. Not that I remembered the pastor's name or even the deacon's name or the head usher's name or the head intercessor's name, but I remembered that whole month of traveling because every time the wave came, we were in an Assembly of God church in Utenhag, and they were very proper. But there was a Dutch reform lady that stepped on the platform to share a vision. And when she stepped on the platform, she fell out. And uh, a few minutes later, she's laughing, but she's trying to get up off the platform. And her chin stuck to the platform. She was a very thin lady. And her whole body is like this. This is the chin. This is the rest of the body. And she's moving around, trying to get up off the floor. Amen. Her husband was the, uh, the headmaster of the largest technical school in town. Everybody knew him. And everybody knew Suzette. But she was right up. Didn't happen at the altar. I mean, it had been bad enough. 
if it had happened at the altar, but it happened up on the up on the platform, right by the pulpit. And she's crawling around trying to get her trying to get her chin off the floor. I don't know, 15 minutes, half hour, God just kept her chin stuck on the floor. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. yeah. You say, well, why? No biblical pattern for that that I know of, except Acts chapter 2 says, these are not drunk as ye suppose. <laughs> They were drunk. Uh, they must have been acting funny. Some people must have had their chins stuck to the floor. <laughs> Hallelujah. There must have been some signs of inebriation. Uh, there must have been some indications. Uh, amen. That uh, things weren't normal as they acted in the synagogue. Uh, this wasn't synagogue behavior. Amen. Uh, this was I. Uh, this was... Uh, this was new wine behavior, amen, hallelujah. This was the banqueting house behavior, uh, hallelujah. This was Song of Solomon behavior. He hath brought me into his banqueting house <laughs> and his banner over me is love. Hallelujah, the banqueting house. That, that word actually in Hebrew is Beit Yain. It's the house of wine. Amen. The banqueting house is the house of wine. Hallelujah. He hath brought me into his house of wine and his banner over me is love. <laughs> Oh, Takurabiandaya. Well, from one end of the country to the other, we just saw God doing that. Now, going back to the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, I started sharing a little bit uh, of what had just happened down there, <laughs> what had happened in, uh, in South Africa. And uh, <laughs> I, I was having a hard time sharing it. Because people were laughing and breaking out into laughter all over this big auditorium. And at the end of the meeting, they came forward and they began. Some fell out and some, some even, I looked back and there was this very proper German man stretched out on the bench, on the seats, on the platform. Stretched right out on the platform, on the seats. I thought... <laughs> I thought, oh my, it's been 14 years till I got here. It might be another 14. <laughs> because the president of, you now usually, you know, it's like camp meeting in Virginia. Brother Heflin doesn't make it to every service and uh, Sister Ruth doesn't make it to every service. You know, sometimes leadership is busy doing other things, but they had made a point that the whole board was going to be there to hear Sister Ruth speak that day. And here was the treasurer over here and the president there and the, the speaker here and the, everybody was sitting right there. And I said, Lord, I've waited 14 years to speak and all I'm doing is laughing. I never got, you know, I do have a couple of sermons uh, that I could have preached to impress somebody, uh, but I, I never got a chance to let them know what I had learned in 37 years of being overseas. No, I just stood there and laughed. Uh, and you know what the Lord said to me? <laughs> he said, I am willing to put people on great platforms of the world uh, if they'll let me do what I want to do when they get on those platforms. Hallelujah. And I want to say, I'm, I'm heading for bigger platforms. Amen. I'm, I'm on the way for bigger platforms than before. This meeting I'm doing in uh, South Africa, 
They're expecting 10,000 in one meeting alone. Amen. And they've lined up again. They just sent me an itinerary uh, on the fax machine. This city and that and the other. Uh, amen. I don't know what's happening, but what I'm saying is this. Uh, hallelujah. Don't think uh, that if you do it God's way, you're going to close the door. I tell you this, if we don't start doing it God's way, the door is going to be closed. Amen. If we don't start letting God do it as he wants to do it, hallelujah, if we just have to stand and sing, you are awesome in this place for the hundred and first time, hallelujah, that we let God do it his way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just was with Brother Paul Cain <clears throat> out in San Francisco. <clears throat> Brother, I ministered with Brother Paul Cain and also Brother Jack Deere. <clears throat> or maybe it's John Deere. <clears throat> Jack Deere, I think is his name. <laughs> well, he, he, you know, it's one, one of the great known ministries across the world in these days at one time he headed up all of the he was the pastor to the pastors at the vineyard out in california well anyway <laughs> brother paul cain spoke so well of our family to everyone there and and uh, one of the things that he commented was how that when he was a young boy, he went to Brother Ward's meeting and said God had sent him. And Brother Ward said, he was in Tulsa at that time, he said, he said, I'm sorry, but the board says that we can't have a revival at this time. And Brother Paul Cain just went down the street and rented another auditorium or went to another place and God began to send a revival. Amen. That all these years my uncle Dr. Ward still remembers he missed out because the board wasn't ready for the revival and there are lots of people that are going to miss out uh, because the board's not ready, the husband's not ready, uh, amen, the wife's not ready, the children aren't ready, but listen, forget about who's not ready. If you're ready, get under that spout uh, where the glory comes out. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. What do you do when a great wave comes? You either ride the wave or you swim in it. <laughs> You're carried by it. Amen. Stop. Whoever did business in an ocean? Nobody does. Amen. You don't do business in an ocean. People come to church and the glory comes and they're planning the menus for the week. The glory comes and they're planning their business for the week. The glory comes, amen, and they're building the house that they're going to be building on site. Isn't that right, Brother Peter, back there? Yes, they got to think about the building they're going to be building next week. When you, the water is there, what are you doing it? You float in it, swim in it, are carried by it, do you play in it, hallelujah, hallelujah, but you're in the water, and certainly one thing is you don't do any business in the water, oh, oh, oh. hallelujah, you are carried by the river of the water of the spirit of the living God. Now, I just was in Germany with Brother Andreas, and he sends greetings to everyone. Three of the folks are flying in tomorrow from Germany to be with us. 
Brother Heflin says there's someone flying in next week from Switzerland to be with us. Why? Because God has said in Isaiah 55, and nations that know not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for he hath glorified thee. What has he done? What does he do when he glorifies us? He puts the glory on us. Oh, huh. amen. Our sister's just gotten in from Norway. We're glad she sent her sons ahead of time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He hath glorified thee. <laughs> what has he done? He's put the glory upon you hallelujah hallelujah you say well if they if the glory covers me too much they won't know all of my accomplishments forget about your accomplishments if the glory covers me too much they won't know all of my degrees forget about your degrees if the glory covers me too much they won't see and you know we've got a long list of what we want everybody to see but I tell you if we can see the glory upon each other hallelujah and if God wants to do it through laughter if he wants to do it through rolling if he wants to do it by we're flat on our back oh whatever he wants to do you say well how did the folks how did the leadership over at the feast of tabernacles the Christian embassy what was their response well I I sort of waited you know you there's sometimes you make an effort to speak to people immediately after a meeting, and then there are times you get, you avoid it. And I waited about a week, and I called up just to thank the, the president for the privilege of having spoken at the feast. And he said very, uh, <coughs> very seriously, thank you, sister for your contribution. <laughs> but you know, one night, <laughs> he doesn't know what the contribution is yet. That's the problem. You know how contributions are. As they're sown, they grow. Amen? <laughs> one night when I was sitting up in the in the balcony I was looking down on the stage now they have a they have quite an impressive program they have uh, people that play in the orchestra that come from all over the world very dedicated uh, anointed musicians they have singers that come from all over the world and they practice a month ahead of time so that every note is right in order and they have dancers that come to dance before the Lord and they train for about a month on site. But when I was sitting on the platform, this, I mean on the, in the balcony, and I was looking down, suddenly I saw the head of Jesus fill that whole area of the platform. From where the curtains come and, you know, from top to bottom, his head was there. You understand what I'm saying? You couldn't see the orchestra. You couldn't see the choir. You couldn't see the dancers. You couldn't see anybody because suddenly the head of Jesus, the face of Jesus was right there. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. Oh, yes, I am. Let the dancers practice and the musicians get in order and the singers get ready. But God's going to still have a final word, not only in Jerusalem, but in all 
the world, the face of Jesus Christ is going to be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shall yet be the preeminent one. Oh, yes. Then I saw, I saw the president standing on the platform and I saw the hand of God come and fall heavily upon him. Now, I don't have the full interpretation of the hand of the Lord falling heavily. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yes, I don't have the full of interpretation on the hand of the Lord falling heavily on the president, but I tell you this, uh, there are going to be some changes. Oh, hallelujah, not only changes for that president, uh, Oh, but there are going to be changes for you and me. I'm not saying this in a negative way. You folks understand what I'm saying? Because God's going to let his hand fall on us too. Amen. He is yet going to have the last word in this revival. Hallelujah. What is, why does he say the wave is coming? Because nobody can control it. Amen. Nobody can control it. Up until now, everything we've had happen, if man wanted to, he could control it. Amen. You know, another slow song or another, you know, we have the firemen that stand by with their hoses to put the fire out. That's what I saw. I saw that we have... Uh, we have firemen with their buckets. I want people to fan the fire. Woo! People standing by, amen, that have the fan in their hand and have the ability to fan the revival when they see the fire coming, amen, that we get the fan out. <laughs> And we fan that revival, fan what God is doing, fan it by the spirit of the living God. Oh, yes, we're going to fan it instead of having folks that see a little fire and, and have rushed down to pour it all out. If you don't go back to your home church and fan revival, God's going to judge you for it. This is the day and hour that he's raising up people. To, oh, oh, yes. Oh, these folks have got some fans over here. Come here. All of you that have got a fan in your hand, just stand up. I want to see you folks with fans in your hand. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you folks to see these folks that are fanning. And just like you're fanning yourself to keep cool, I want you to start fanning revival fanning the fire of God, fanning the move of the Holy Ghost, fanning what God is doing in this last day and hour. He hath brought us into his banqueting house. He has brought us into his house of wine and his banner over us is love. Let's all gather here at the altar. Bring your fans with you. Those of you that don't have natural fans, I want to get you to get out a spiritual fan. Hallelujah. And you just start fanning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start fanning with that fan of the Spirit of God. Yes, there's a glory that's already coming. A glory that's already coming. Coming, oh, Tasuri Biandaya. Hallelujah. Give me that one. You're awesome. <laughs> you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba, Father. To you our lives we 
raise you are awesome in this place mighty God even if you can't stay but a few minutes come on down and be in this area where this water is moving amen you are awesome in this place mighty God you are awesome in this place Abba Father you are worthy of our praise to you joy flow how oh, you are awesome in this place mighty God you are awesome in this place Focus your attention on the Lord. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God, close your eyes and see the Lord. You are awesome in this place. Abba, Father, you are worthy of to you. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. Just sing to the Lord. He's walking among us. walking among you, touching you, ministering to you. Some in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place. Father, Hey! 
is love he loves us but that banner gives us the ability to pour back love to him and tonight earlier when brother Heflin was leading that song you're awesome what the Lord said to me was this he said if people would be willing to stand in my presence to praise, to worship, and to love. He said they wouldn't even have to do anything else. I'd pay their bills. I'd answer their prayers. I'd solve their problems. I'd meet their needs. If they would only just stand in my presence, praising and worshiping and loving me. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you have come with a long list of things that you need from God. Throw away your list. And instead of listing what you need, spend the same time loving Him. He's going to automatically take care of the list. He's going to take care of the list. He's going to take care of the list. He's going to take care of the needs, the problems, the situations. Hallelujah. I want to say this. If anyone here is sick of any disease, if you'll spend your time loving him, you'll automatically be healed. That love you pour out to him will come back in healing power in healing anointing, in healing deliverance, in that healing flow. Oh, hallelujah. Cancer cannot stand the power of God's love. Oh, hallelujah. When you pour out love to him, he's going to pour it back unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing it together. And I love you, yes, I love you, King of kings, Lord of lords, I love you, yes, I One of the ladies in the meeting said, Sister Ruth, since 1962, I have prayed for God to send someone here to speak on the glory. Recently in Germany, people from Eastern, formerly Eastern Germany, half of the people in the meeting were from formerly East Germany Areas that five years ago would have been impossible for them to have come. People
people from Dresden, from Potsdam, from other areas of Eastern Germany, formerly Eastern Germany, they were all there, but they said this, we have prayed for someone to come and speak on the glory. You and I are experiencing it. Amen. The way that you come into the glory and you maintain it in a service is through praise and worship. And when the glory comes, it remains as we worship when we cease from our own labors and let that, uh, uh, that spirit of worship just flow through us. Uh, hallelujah. God's ministering to you in the glory tonight. Uh, hallelujah. As we're standing, let's just keep worshiping him. Oh, yes, you are awesome. Oh, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba, Father. of God he thought the man of God would come out and wave his hand over him touch him but instead he was given a message that he himself must dip in the waters amen the message that God is giving in this day is we've got to learn how to dip the, in the waters ourselves Amen. You say, well, I've done it in the service this morning. Well, Naaman had to do it seven times. Amen. Dip and dip and dip and dip and dip. Oh, how, what does seven represent? Completion. There'll be times that you'll have a need and you'll dip in once and it'll be complete. There'll be times you'll dip in more than seven times, but you'll dip until it's complete. Amen. But God is teaching us the dipping. Amen. How to plunge ourselves in to the river of God, into this move of the Spirit. Amen. You can come into the banqueting table and banqueting house. You can have the banner over you, but you've still got a drink. And God is teaching us how to do the drinking, how to do the dipping. Amen. How to move into it. Amen. Yes, that's what God's doing in this day and hour. Because you've got to take it back to England with you you've got to take it back to Africa with you you've got to take it back to your own areas 
And until the river gets big enough that it's all over the world, and that's coming because the Lord says, the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. But until that time, you may be the only one dipping in in your church. You may be the only one dipping in in your area. You've got to be able to do it. Amen. You're going to take back from camp meeting the ability to dip into God. Oh, hallelujah. And live in this realm of the glory of God greater than ever before. Hallelujah. You are worthy of our praise to you. saying but I have no one to help me into the water but remember Jesus said I will amen the man who was sick who was by the pool who was waiting for someone to help him when the waters were troubled he said, I have no one to help me, but Jesus said, I will. <laughs> and he healed him. The waters are troubled tonight, and some of you are waiting for someone to help you in. But Jesus is here to minister unto you and to help you in. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yield to the Holy Ghost. That flow is here. That flow is here. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy of our praise. To you, our lives we 
praise you are awesome in this place mighty God one of the most powerful ways to come into it uh, is singing in the spirit uh, one of the German brothers he had been in uh, knowing, known the Lord a Jewish brother had known the Lord for many years in Germany in Berlin he said to me last week, Sister Ruth, this is the first time I've ever been able to sing in the spirit. Spirit-filled man in the churches in Berlin for maybe 30 years or more. Just came into singing in the spirit. It's powerful. Sing in the spirit. Yabararo